और हमारे देख सकते हैं पाकिस्तानी जो एम्बेसडर हैं वो एक की नमाज के लिए फिर पाक में स्टेडियम में आ चुके हैं और हम अभी उनके पास चलेंगे और उनसे इस इंतहाई जो लम्हा हैं उनके बारे में पूछेंगे मैं जो लाइव हूँ हमारा सेशन आपको फ्री और अगर इनके हिसाब से मिस करते हैं तो हमारे बिल्कुल भी उसमें लेटर आप आप नाइन की न्यूज़ में देख सकते हैं और हमारी फेसबुक और हमारी सोशल मीडिया के जरिए आप देख सकते हैं तो देखते रहिए और हमें अभी आप चलते हैं
and just like the end of for the beautiful recitation from the Holy Quran. Now I would like to invite Hadra Elias to come to the stage and present the translation of the verses from the Holy Quran that were recited by Zamzam. I greet you all today with the Islamic peace Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you, everyone. In the name of God, most compassionate, ever merciful. O people, we created you from a male and a female. I divided you into large peoples and tribes so that you might recognize them. Surely, the most honorable amongst you in the sight of God is he who fears God the most. Certainly, God is all-knowing, all-aware. Then, when Ishmael reached the age of the ability to run about with him, Abraham said, O oh my son, I have seen a dream that I am sacrificing you. So think, what is your opinion? Ishmael said, O oh my father, do that immediately which you are being commanded. If God wills, you will find me amongst the patient and steadfast. So when God submitted to the will of God, and Abraham laid him down on his forehead, and we called out to him, O oh Abraham, how wonderfully have you made your dream really true. Surely we pay back the spiritually excellent the same way by blessing you with the prominence of becoming our closest friend. It was by far a great open trial. And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. And we preserved his virtuous remembrance, praise amongst the succeeding generations. Peace be upon Abraham. That is how we pay back those who were committed to spiritual excellence. Surely, he was of our servants with perfect faith. And after Ishmael, we gave him the good news of Isaac. He was also a prophet, one of the most pious. And we bestowed blessings on him and on Isaac, and amongst their descendants are both the virtuous as well as those who expressly wrong themselves. And surely we bless Moses and Aaron as well with our favors, and we delivered them and their people from the ordeal, and we helped them so it was they who overmastered, and we gave them, both of them, the clear and enlightening book the total 
and God has spoken the truth. Thank you so much for listening.
and ensure that that voice that Ireland is a country that recognises all its community, I'll ensure that that voice is heard. So today, all of you after this families, I hope you enjoyed that day. I hope you, like all of us, remember the context we're in, remember those who kept us all safe. And I want to wish you all a evening back. Thank you.
two months ago, I saw on internet and social media a picture of German Muslims performing Eid prayer, the previous Eid of Fitr prayer, in the car park of Ikea. That big picture went viral. And many people thought, rightly so, that it was a kind and great gesture of Ikea. I thought that COVID-19 is going to be with us for the next few months, at least. It means if the mosques are open, which they are now, if the places of worship are open, they will be limited in terms of how many people they are able to accommodate because social distancing has to be implemented. So I thought, what if we as Muslims have to perform our Eid prayer outside? Where would we be praying then? Would it be a car park? And I said, no. How can it be a car park? This is Ireland. This is a country that is proud of its diversity, that embraces those that come and become part of the society. So I said, which place is the most iconic and symbolic and historic place outside? And of course, it is Croke Park. Because the GAA and Croke Park is something every Irish person is brought up with. It's part of Irishness. So I approached Croke Park management two months ago that Eid Eid Adha is coming in two months and we would like to pray. Are you open to this idea that we would pray Eid in Croke Park? And straight away, their answer was yes. They were welcoming to the idea. And I thank the GA, I thank Croke Park for this. We could not have imagined, as Irish Muslims, that our Eid prayer is going to be broadcast live on state television. This is another time, this is the first. Not only are we Muslims celebrating Eid al Adha in this historic place, iconic place, history is being made for today as the first complete broadcast on television, state television, in a non-Muslim majority country of Eid. It shows how accepting the society is. It shows how open the society is. It's, it, it, credit has to be given to the society. Credit has to be given to, to be given where it's due. We, the Quran speaks about diversity. I think Zamzam, she recited from the, one of the verses of the Quran when Allah said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O minkam, inna khalamnakum dhakarin awuntha, wa ja'alnakum shu'ubin wa qabayna li ta'arafu. We, God, say to So this diversity is a divine now our, our home, we call our homes. And I often say this, that we Muslims are going to be, and we need to be, again, we need to re-educate ourselves. We need to go back to our tradition. We need to go back to the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah, because we don't implement those enough in our societies. Today also, my brothers and sisters, is a historical day, because this is perhaps the first Eid al-Adha in the history, in at least, the recent history, in this century, the previous century, where on the day of Eid al-Adha, where Muslims commemorate the sacrifice of Abraham, Ibrahim a.s. And Ibrahim a.s. Is, uh, is, is a central figure in the Abrahamic faith, in Christianity, in Judaism, and Islam. And today, on this day of Eid al-Adha, we have with us the faith leaders of the Abrahamic faith. I welcome them. I am thankful to Archbishop David Martin, who's representing the Catholic Church. I'm thankful. I, wel I welcome Archbishop Michael Jackson from the Church of Ireland. And I thank and welcome Rabbi Zalman Nes, who, who represents the Jewish community in Ireland. And today they are showing, and we are all showing together, a message of peace, a message, a message of unity, a message of humanity, because this is what we need in this day and age. My brothers and sisters, today the day of Eid, we commemorate Ibrahim salam and the great sacrifice of Ibrahim. This sacrifice is mentioned in the Bible, as the narrative of the sacrifice is slightly different, but it is also mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Quran as well. It's something that is common among our communities. The, the slight difference is in terms of which son he had to sacrifice. Whether it was Isaac, or whether it was Ismail, which we Muslims believe it to be. My brothers and sisters, what kind of message do we get from, from this? I think the message that we get from 
um, this day of Eid al-Adha, and this celebration, and this festival, and this sacrifice, is the message to trust in God, to have blind trust in God. When you, when you read the verses of the Quran that talk about this great sacrifice, it, it talks about how Ismail was approached by his father Abraham, Ibrahim السلام, and he was asked, he was asked, oh my son, Ya Badiya, what do you think of this? I had a vision that I was sacrificing you. What is your view? Ismail was only 10 to 14 years of age. But the Prophet is teaching the importance of religious freedom. He is teaching the importance of asking and having the consent. You cannot enforce religion on others. And he asks his son, Oh my son, what do you think? What is your view? And he says, Ya Abba Tif'al, La Tukma, Satajib Me, Insha'Allah, Islamirin. And he responds because he was uprought by Abraham. And he, and he had this trust in God also. He knew that nothing could happen that was wrong. And God would never do anything wrong like that. And this was merely a trial test. And he said, oh my father, do as you have been commanded. And you will find me among the patients. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam tried to sacrifice his son, we all know that did not happen. Straight away, Allah Almighty had revealed to him the following verses. Ya Ibrahim, O Abraham, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ رُؤِيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكِنَا فِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ That is enough. You don't need to do anything else. You don't have to sacrifice your son. So immediately, a ram was sacrificed as, as a substitute, as an alternative. And it was like his, he had sacrificed his own son. That which is the most dearest to him. An important message was given. God would never want you to shed the blood of another human being. There is no such thing as sacrifice of a human being and hidden people in the name of God. If there was anything like that, surely Abraham would be able, would have been able to sacrifice his son. But he wasn't. The knife, according to the Islamic tradition, the knife failed. The knife did not work. The law of physics was changed. The knife that is supposed to cut failed to do so because of the commandment of Allah Almighty. That's one of the messages we get. I also would like to highlight that today, because this year, many of our activities, our life actually has changed. Everyone's life has changed because of this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. Our places of worship are different. Our activities are different. But in, but in many ways, I think this pandemic has brought with it also certain positivity, some blessings with it. If it wasn't for this pandemic, we probably would have not have been here. If it wasn't for this pandemic, we, our communities would not have been united. Because now we understand as humans, we are in this together. And we are having the same challenges. My brothers and sisters, many people are putting their lives at risk. They work in the healthcare. Many of the Muslim community members are working as doctors, as nurses. They are healthcare professionals. Recently, one of our members uh, from Dublin 15, Dr. Sayyid Wakara was the eighth person from uh, the healthcare workers that lost his life while serving the community fighting against the battle of COVID-19. Many people have, are affected by this. And in order to ensure that we eliminate and we, we minimize the risk of, of this uh, pandemic and the infection, we have to implement social distancing. I know Hundreds of thousands of people wanted to be here today, but only 200 people, the first 200 that registered, are able to, to be here with us. But alhamdulillah, another lesson that today they are able to join us through the television. They're able to join us and, and be with us through watching us live on television. We must continue to implement social distancing. We must continue to take this COVID-19 pandemic serious. And this is why. We have only 200 people, despite that this growth part can accommodate many more hundreds with social distancing. But we have to follow the rules. And we have to ensure that everything that we can as an individual, as a community, to keep ourselves but also others safe. And keeping others safe is part of the Islamic tradition. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, said that during a pandemic, the person that isolates himself, the person that implements social distancing, this is something he said 1400 years ago, that the person that keeps a distance of two spheres, which is approximately six, seven feet, 
that person will be will be receiving the mercy of Allah Almighty. So we will be, inshallah, my brothers and sisters, shortly performing our Eid prayer. After the Eid prayer, our distinguished guests, archbishops, rabbis, they are going to address us on this uh, momentous and historic occasion. occasion. Inshallah, Salat al Eid is going to be performed with, with uh, two rakaat. We are starting in, a, in probably one or two minutes. So I just want to uh, repeat and, and remind you of how we perform eight prayers because we have two eight prayers in a year. We don't perform this on a daily basis. So for many, this will be help. So we will perform two rakaat, inshallah, two units. And in the first unit, there is going to be seven takbirs. After the sana, after subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tawla wa tisbika wa ta'ala tibika wa la ghayr. Then in the second rakat, we are going to have six takbirs after the salam before al fatiha So today we are performing on the ala madhab shawafi al albani, not on the madhab al hanafi Because we obviously are here where most of the Muslims follow the madhab of those imams. Those, so the jurisprudence that we use is the jurisprudence of the three imams and not of the Hanafi imam. So we are going to, inshallah, start the prayer. After the prayer, it's going to be the Eid Khutbah, the Eid Sermon, and the prayers, which is part of the supplication, the Muslim supplication. And when we conclude that, inshallah, we will go to the next session, which is the important speeches and addresses uh, from our distinguished guests. May I ask all of you, brothers and sisters, to please stand up for Salat al Eid. Our guests can remain seated, they can observe. <laughs> ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولم يكن له كفوا 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Please recite the Queen loudly الله أكبر الله أكبر 
لا اله الا الله والله اكبر الله اكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا باصحابه سيدنا بعدد من قال وقال خصوصا على سيدنا ابا بكر وعلى سيدنا عمر وعلى سيدنا عثمان وعلى سيدنا علي وعلى ابائه الشريفين الامام ابي محمد بن حسن وحسين وعلى سائر الصحابه وعلى سائر اهل البيت وعلينا معهم اجمعين. اما بعد يا ايها المؤمنون هذا يوم العيد السعيد هنيئا لمن اشبع اليوم جائعا او كساء عريانا هنيئا لمن دار اليوم مريضا او ساعد حيران وهنيئا لمن بر اليوم اباؤه وامهاته ووسع اليوم على زوجته وبنائه وبناته وهنيئا لمن ذكر الله القلب يوم قلبا ولسانا واركانا وشكره ونحن وصلاه وسلاما. اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين. اللهم قل امين قولوا امين، اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين. اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم. اللهم خلص قبله الاولى وارض فلسطين. اللهم خلص كل بلاد الاسلام خصيصا بلاد الشام وبلاد اليمن وبلاد البرما وكل عالم من الظالمين ومن المنافقين. اللهم انا نسالك الصحه والعفه والامانه وحسن الخلق ورضا القلب. اللهم انا نعوذ بك من الفرس والجنون والفساد ومن سيئ الاسقام. Oh Allah, we have gathered here in this historic place, Grove Park, for Eid al-Abha, and we have performed the Eid al-Abha prayer. Ya Allah, oh God, please accept this from us. Oh God, grant us mercy, grant us your compassion, and grant us peace and unity among all communities. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq, the strength, to follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by becoming a symbol of accepting diversity, and Ya Allah, Ya Arham Rahimeen, we ask you on this blessed day of Eid al-Adha for billions of people throughout the world, billions, almost two billion people are celebrating and commemorating Abraham's sacrifice. Ya Allah, we ask you to put peace among them, to put peace and to shower your blessings of peace and mercy and compassion among the whole world, in all societies, all communities, and especially, especially among the Abrahamic communities, especially in our homeland, Ireland, in our country, Ireland. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahman, eliminate and end the COVID-19 pandemic. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahman, those that have lost their lives in the battle against COVID-19, grant them forgiveness and grant them entrance to Zillat al Grant them entrance to paradise. Ya Allah, those that have been ill, they're in the hospitals. Ya Allah, give them shifa, Ya Allah. Give them shifa. Ya Allah, give them quick recovery. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahimin, we ask you in this day of Eid that especially those that are in the front line, in the battle against COVID 19, all healthcare professionals, Ya Allah, bless them, bless their families, and down the poor strength, Ya Allah, and protect them, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahimin, today we saw 80 cases almost last yesterday, a new case of COVID 19. This is very worrying and concerning, Ya Allah. We ask you for your mercy. Ya Allah, give us the ability, the strength, and the wisdom to implement social distancing. Give us the, the tawfiq, the wisdom, to follow the instructions and guidelines by the healthcare, by, by, by the HSC. And Ya Allah, guide our leaders, guide our leadership, our political leadership, our governments, in, 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 in helping us, the community, the country, coming out of this pandemic. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahmin, give us the tawfiq to abide by all the rules and regulations. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahmin, wherever people are performing the Eid prayers, accept it from them, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahmin, today, all those that are part of this Eid al Adha in managing it and organizing it, from the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council, from the management of Pro Park, the, the media is present, RT, all those, everybody that is here and has made is possible for people to to see this and be with us in this in this Eid uh, al-Adha prayer. Bless them immensely, Ya Allah. Grant them the body immensely, Ya Allah. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rahmatika Ya Arham al-Rahmin. Lastly, I would like to wish all of you and all of our viewers Eid Mubarak. May Allah make this a 
very blessed day for you and your family. And my brothers and sisters, I just want to, before I conclude, thank our guests, distinguished guests, the Archbishop David Martin from the Catholic Church, Archbishop Michael Jackson from Church of Ireland, and Rabbi Zahran Lent, Minister Roderick O'Gorman, who was with us in Machadib earlier, unfortunately. Uh, but, and also other guests, we have a few speakers. Uh, I want you to um, listen to their words of wisdom today. Their words that will echo the, the voice and uh, the call to peace, the call for peace and the call for unity. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Honorable faith leaders, guests, brothers and sisters in Islam and brothers and sisters in humanity, I greet you all with a greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you all. My name is Kashmira and I have the pleasure today to invite some very special people up here to share some words with you all. It's a very special day for all of us today being Eid very special day for me especially. I've always wanted to host a show, so this might be the, the closest I'll ever get to it. So first of all, we will now commence with speeches from our guests. Our president, President Michael D. Higgins, was unable to attend Pope Park today amidst the pandemic. But the president wanted to share a very special message to all the Irish Muslims. He sends his warmest wishes every year. However, this year we have a very special message. May I call upon stage Brian Coonan, who is a friend of the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council, to come forward and read out the special message by His Excellency President Michael D. Higgins. Message from President Michael A. Higgins. Today, as our Muslim community gather in Pro Park to celebrate Eid and Adha, may I send you my very best wishes. The celebration in such an iconic Irish venue of this significant holiday in the Islamic calendar is an important moment in Ireland's narrative. It reminds us of the richly diverse community we have become and the enormous contribution that you, our new communities, have made and continue to make to Ireland. May I take this opportunity as President of Ireland to thank the Muslim community for your valuable contribution to our shared society and to wish you every health, happiness and contentment. Michael B. Higgins, Luke Duran and Mary. for sharing that and also I'd like to extend a thank you for all the help that you have given the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council. Next up, with pleasure, may I call upon Mark Dorman, Director of Pro Park, to come forward and say a few words. Thank you. Alaikum, Chief Galeer, Mamajan, and Chief Martin Bogey. You're all very welcome today to Crow Park Stadium on this very important day in the Muslim calendar. We feel very privileged and honored to host the Muslim community here for the first time. We recognize the importance of your sacred festival, and we're delighted to be able to play a small role in it. The dignity and solemnity of today's ceremony is greatly enhanced by the presence of so many leaders of the interfaith community, Rabbi Salman Lent, Archbishop Michael Jackson, Archbishop Jeremy Martin, and by the presence of His Excellency, the Ambassador of Pakistan. We extend a warm welcome to you also. 
Co Park Stadium has been the home of the Gaelic Games since 1913. We have a capacity of 82,000, which makes it the third largest stadium in Europe. In an average year, we would welcome 1 million visitors to attend matches and events. Indeed, Crow Park has been at the centre of Irish life, as Roderick O'Connor, the Minister, mentioned. For over 100 years, we've hosted sporting and non-sporting events, and religious events. Our model is where we all belong. And we feel that having a your celebration here today is living proof that this is a place where you belong to. We strive to ensure that the barriers to full participation in Irish society are broken down for all communities. We salute and thank the many members of the Muslim community who have played a huge role in keeping us safe over recent months. Your community has shown selfless dedication in the delivery of health care. Many of you working on the front line, and your contribution is greatly appreciated. On this blessed occasion of Eid, we wish you and your families joy, peace, happiness, and prosperity, and a very warm Eid al Mar Barak. Gareth Mahal, Shukran. much Mark for your kind words. You and your team has been an integral part of making today possible. We are thankful to the faith leaders who have joined us in this Eid festival which commemorates Abraham's sacrifice. Abraham is a central figure in Islam, Christianity and Judaism. Today this Eid is historical in many ways. As his eminence Sheikh Al Qadri mentioned in his speech, Today, Muslims are not only play, praying Eid at Crow Park, but also on this day of Eid, three Abrahamic faith leaders of Ireland have come together at this historic mo uh, moment. First of all, I would like to welcome His Great Archbishop Dermot Martin, Roman Catholic Arch Archbishop of Dublin and Primate of Dublin to come forward and address us on this historic moment. happy to have this occasion to wish the entire Muslim community in Ireland and especially those of you gathered here in Croke Park, Eid Mubarak, warm wishes and blessings, Croke Gardens. This is a very propitious moment for the Muslim community in Ireland. On the one hand, we're all saddened that we are unable to host large celebrations in our places of worship due to the coronavirus measures. On the other hand, there's something special at having this Muslim celebration here in Croke Park. Croke Park is a special gathering place for Ireland and for all Irish. Croke Park has a special place in the history of Ireland. It's associated with joyful, significant, but also very tragic moments in the history of our country. Today it's a place where distinguished visitors come. There's a very interesting museum here in Croke Park. However, I think we can also truly say that the entire Croke Park Stadium is a living museum still being created year by year. I think of the visit of Queen Elizabeth. I had the honor to accompany Pope Francis here on his visit in Ireland. It's a place of great sporting occasions and lesser known local events. Croke Park is part of this local community. Every year at Christmas, several hundreds of elderly people come together for a meal at Christmas. There's a conference center here which focuses each day of the year on the economic, 
cultural and educational needs of the future of Ireland. But today marks a new chapter in the history of Croke Park. Today our celebration is a gesture of recognising publicly the place of the Muslim community as an integral part of the family of the Irish. And we recognise the contribution of your Muslim community to the Ireland of today and of tomorrow. I'm honoured that you've kindly invited me as Archbishop of Dublin, leader of the Catholic community of believers in Jesus Christ, to be part of your celebration. I feel very much at home with you. I'm happy over the years to have been guest at so many Muslim celebrations and have had Muslim leaders share in our Christian celebrations. The message of Pope Francis for this year's Ramadan stressed how the month of Ramadan is so central in your religion and therefore dear to you at personal, family and social levels. It's a time, he said, of spiritual healing and growth, of sharing with the poor, of strengthening bonds with relatives and friends. When Pope Francis visited a mosque in Baku, Azerbaijan in 1916, he said that meeting one another in fraternal friendship, in the place of prayer, is a powerful sign, one that shows the harmony which religions can build together based on personal relations and the goodwill of leaders. This morning, I shared the joy of Muslim families who enrich our Irish culture through their hard work, their family life, their creativity. I think of the manner in which the younger generations of Muslims in Ireland can today proudly profess their faith and can shape the place of Islam in Irish culture. I don't know if your children would like to be called Irish Muslims or Muslim Irish. The truth is they're both and proudly so. And we need and we all welcome their contribution to our future. The message to which I referred earlier, the Vatican message, focused especially on places of worship. Places of worship, as, the, as was said, for spaces for spiritual hospitality. I'm humbled by the spiritual hospitality that I'm receiving here this morning, and I thank you. The document on human fraternity and world peace and living together, signed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar in Abu Dhabi in February 2019, spoke about the protection of places of worship, the importance and the significance of our places of worship. Places of worship are important. However, places of worship are more than just bricks and mortar. More fundamental is the witness that's fostered and grows within our places of worship and emerges from them into today's world. Witness to the God who is full of mercy and compassion. Christians, Muslims, and the Jews share a common responsibility to witness to what is demanded today from any true believer in the God who is full of mercy and compassion. Our places of worship, our gatherings, must be places where all in intolerance is shunned and respect is learned. Our hearts must be hearts that are open to embrace and not reject. Our hands must be hands that support and help and do not push aside. Our mentality must be a mentality that is inspired by compassion and not judgmentalism. Our world can be so harsh, it really needs mercy and compassion. Our city here is tarnished by violence. We hear stories of racism and intolerance. We watch as poverty and precariousness grow and new insecurity strikes many families. 
Our world needs a common witness to what mercy and compassion mean. And in a world where many have difficulty in finding faith in God, we all have to examine our individual cons consciences to see how we have failed to show convincingly in our, in our lives how God is not just an abstract, distant figure, but the one who teaches us all as care workers. And we know that most health care workers represent the best of our Irish, new and old, believers and non-believers, who work together tirelessly with care and compassion. For Muslims, Ramadan is a moment of, as I said earlier, spiritual healing and growth, of sharing with the poor, and of strengthening bonds with relatives and friends. We join in your celebration, and we know that together we can be a forceful presence in the Ireland of tomorrow for spiritual growth, for sharing with the poor, and for building friendship. These are the basis of lasting peace in our society and in our world. And I go away today, will go away today, hopeful for what we can achieve together with the help of God, who is full of mercy and compassion. Amen. Bishop Dermot Martin for that lovely message. I think all of us today can take something home from that. Next up, I would like to welcome His Grace Archbishop Michael Jackson, Archbishop of Dublin and Bishop of Glendalough, to address us on this historic moment. Before I say any more, I'd like to thank the Islamic community, Sheikh Umar al Qadri, Hook Park, and the GAA for inviting me to participate in Eid al Adha today. It is, as others have already said, a truly historic and momentous and humane occasion. I want to wish all Muslims Eid Mubarak. And I echo the call to peace and to harmony that is the lifeblood of faith itself and the calling of all faiths worldwide. One day earlier this month, the electricity went off suddenly in my house. It was a short power outage in the locality. And in the silence, I heard only the silence. And then suddenly, I heard the humming of the fridge, the first sound of a revived electrical life. Our world today is rather like this looking and listening for signs of life revived in challenging and challenged circumstances day in and day out. We continue to live in a global pandemic that has affected us all and some of us much more tragically than others and we all rightly pay tribute and give thanks for the commitment of everyone who stands on the front line. For faith traditions, as for everyone else in Ireland, the lockdown left us in a position where we could not gather. In specific instances, this meant a virtual Ramadan, a virtual Passover, and a virtual Easter. 
This, at those times, was the sound of silence. It had many spin-offs for communities and for individuals who are still in the process of working through the consequences and coming to terms with the old and the new expectations that now rub on easily alongside each other in counterpoint more than in harmony. What we might rightly ask today were the sounds of life that crept into this silence. The greatest was undoubtedly neighborliness. The unknown person next door became a neighbor. Care quickly began to go both ways. While many of us had been taught from our youth that it is more blessed to give than to receive, we all learned the positive lesson of humility and of otherness to the effect that it is just as blessed to receive as to give. That great word that the Minister for Health, Simon Harris TD, put on the national kitchen table in the early days of the coronavirus was the word kindness. And this is still for us today a fresh way to connect the future with the past. Kindness is a truth of every faith. Kindness is an act of every faithful person. The hospitality of humanity encompasses the person acknowledged, the goodness offered, the listening ear, and the intuitive look. Many have died tragically, horribly, and alone. Many have had no option but to let their home become a combination of office and of school, where privacy is eroded and where boundaries are dismantled. And yet, many have learned something else. That kindness is a boomerang. A boomerang of love and of hope. We have all learned that our religious faith and our civic duty work together and need one another to make social, community, and human sense. And we've all learned that that phrase, catch you later, is not, in fact, a real greeting. Time is in our hands. And now is the time of our faith, if we are to build together a society where all are different and yet all are. Thank you all so much indeed for this invitation to be with you on this wonderful and momentous day. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Archbishop Michael Jackson. You delivered a message of community that resonated to all of us today. Now I would like to welcome Rabbi Zalman Lenz from Dublin Hebrew Congregation to come forward and address us today on this very special day. Assalamu alaikum, Ayyid Adha Mubarak. It is truly a great honor 
to be invited here today to be part of your prayers and celebration in this special venue. I would especially like to thank Sheikh Al Qadri and the GAA for the very kind invitation. In Ireland, they say that sport is a religion, but I'm not sure this is what they meant. In Jewish tradition, when Abraham Ibrahim was a young boy, he looked around at a wonderful world and he wondered if a house has an architect and a builder, who is the great architect of all this beauty? He formulated his own ideas and concluded that the gods of wood, rock and stone were useless. And he began worshipping the one true God, not visible, not tangible, but all-seeing, all-knowing and all-powerful, whether God, Hashem or Allah. That belief of one individual grew into what we have today, multitudes across the globe who believe in the one God of Abraham or Abraham or Ibrahim. It is a special time now when the world is in fear of plague and pandemic and when there is so much social unrest, so much hatred and xenophobia, anti-Muslim and anti-Semitic feelings. It's special that we can all stand here or sit here today together with my esteemed colleagues, leaders and representatives of the three Abrahamic faiths, together as brothers, to show that there should be no place for hatred, no place for division, only for love, kindness, brotherhood and peace on this world we share together. Atawaja ilikum liyasma tahani wa tabrikat wa atyab alumnia vidwam aseha wa nalfor asad. Thank you, Rabbi Zalbermund. It's an honor today for us to have you here. Our last speaker is not a religious speaker but he is someone who demonstrates very clearly what it means to be an Irish Muslim. May I welcome Aboud al Jumaidi, also known as Bonner Odin Sheikh, on stage to say a few words and maybe he can tell us how he got his other name. Greeting you all with the Islamic greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you all, dear Gwitchy. I am Abu Abdullah al Jumaili, also known as Bonner or Lynchik. I am originally from Iraq, Baghdad, and I can proudly say, with my chest wide open, that I'm Irish too. I moved to Ireland in 2008. I started primary school straight away. I did not have a word of English, apart from saying hi. I remember just sitting in class and writing what the teacher is writing on the board, even though I did not understand. One day, I was walking around my primary school at lunchtime, and I heard some students talk about hurling. I hadn't a clear what it was. I have to it was home time. I was leaving my class and I see some boys were going off the train and it caught my eyes. I had a quick look but forgot about it soon enough. I didn't, I didn't really take too much notice. In a couple of weeks time, two teachers came up to me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out for the school hurling team. Sure, why not, I said. So I started training. It didn't really appeal to me at the time. I was frustrated at that moment. Couldn't even hold the hurl properly. Woke up the next day, picked up the hurl, and started trying to at least lift the bottom. I kept at it, and kept at it, and kept at it. Until I eventually lifted the ball, realizing that I have fallen in love with, in my view, and as many would agree, the best game on earth. From there, my hurling career has started and grown obsession with hurling, 
which is getting stronger by every puck of the slip. It started to become so important to me that I went out every day to practice. No matter what the weather was, lashing rain, hail snow, snow or even thunder. No matter where it was, you could count on me to be either at my back garden or my local pitch, getting my accuracy and touch up. I play hurling by club volunteer Sir John's. I also play hurling for my college, Dublin Institute of Technology, now TU Dublin City Campus. I also study law at LLB, going into my final year now. I was still starting off hurling as a Muslim here, as I didn't really speak the language, didn't understand the people, nor did I even know the system. But now, Ireland is my home. And although I've had some daydreams of living in a Muslim society, I could not see myself leaving my homeland. Not only do I feel comfortable and truly a home here, but I understand the people, the culture, and the system, but also feel a care and responsibility towards my Irish people. I would like to thank the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council for providing a platform to Irish Muslims to celebrate their dual identity of being Irish and being Muslim and inspire us with the vision of bridging communities and building peace. I also would like to thank the GAA and Pope Prague especially for making this event a wonderful event happen with the Irish Muslim Peace and Education Council. To everyone out there, no matter where you are in the country, no matter where you're from, try GAA. GAA, where we all belong. Eid Mubarak, Ur of Mahagut, Svalagat. I think everyone was smiling ear to ear listening to your story. Such an inspirational story for so many people out there. Thank you so much for sharing it. And I'm sure your club and your university were cheering you on while you were speaking. May I now call upon our last speaker, Sheikh, to come forward and conclude the Eid at Crow Park with the Dua, a Muslim supplication. But just before I do that, um, he's had everything, he knows everything that was going on today, but this is just something that he was not aware of. Uh, the volunteers of the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council would just like to present him with a little token of love for all that he has done for our community. Thank you.
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Just to conclude, I would like to once again thank the faith leaders, Abrahamic faith leaders that have joined us today and made this already historical Eid al-Adha once again because of this historical. I would like to thank also uh, the GAA Croke Park for opening the doors of Croke Park for the Irish Muslims. And I hope that this will continue and hopefully next year there is no social distancing and we can have much, much more people, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters with us on the day of Eid. I also would like to thank the volunteers of the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council and most importantly, uh, the management and all uh, the, the people working uh, under the leadership of Fianola, who has been really uh, wonderful because to make this uh, event happen, it took us approximately two months of planning. Now we are going to conclude uh, with, with the dua, with the Muslim supplication. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi Allahumma inna kant as-salamu minka as-salamu ilayka arju'u as-salamu Hayyina ya Rabbana bis-salamu wa dakhilna jannata dar as-salamu Tabarakta ya Rabbana wa ta'alayti ya dhal jalali wal ikram Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم رب اغفر ورحم أنت خير الراحمين أو الله please accept our salat al eid today يا الله يا رحم الراحمين please accept our attendance today and يا الله يا رحم الراحمين wherever Muslim brothers and sisters are celebrating and commemorating the sacrifice of Ibrahim عليه السلام please accept it from them this year, because of the pandemic, there aren't millions of people performing the Hajj. There are only 1,000 people performing the Hajj. May, may Allah accept it from them. And those millions that planned, that saved to perform the Hajj this year and were unable to do so because of COVID-19, may Allah write for them the reward of an accepted Hajj. May Allah grant them the reward of an accepted Hajj. May Allah Almighty bring peace in all humanity. Wherever mankind is suffering, may Allah remove the suffering. May Allah give us the ability, the tawfiq, to help those in need. And always lend a helping hand. May we follow the teachings of all the Prophets, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus Christ, and Prophet Muhammad. All of these messengers of God, may Allah give us tawfiq to follow their path of peace, their path of harmony and the path of unity. May Allah protect all the brothers and sisters in humanity working as healthcare professionals throughout the world. May Allah Almighty bless every part of this world, all humanity, especially our country, Ireland. May Allah keep us united. May Allah keep us in peace and in harmony and give us the tawfiq that we engage more with each other, we interact more with each other, so we learn from each other and we accept the diversity that is God's will. May Allah Almighty give us the tawfiq that in this current pandemic we look after other human beings and are in need. We don't become selfish. We look after the ones that are very vulnerable in these days, in this time and age. And may Allah Almighty also reward everybody that has been part of this Eid al-Adha in Crow Park. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina wa Shafi'ina wa Qurwati a'amrina Muhammadin وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله العيد مبارك Brothers and sisters, 